Okay, for example five, it says, let's say a family decides to have two children. Let X represent the number of girls in the family. What is the probability distribution of X? Okay, what's the variable in this problem? Let's see if we can spot it. Family's gonna have two kids. X is gonna represent the number of girls in the family and then we want a PDF. So I see my variable, right? Number of girls in the family, that phrase number of, all right? That will always be an indication of your variable. It's not to say that every problem will explicitly say number of something, but if you ever see number of something, that's definitely your variable. All right, so we've got the number of girls in a family and we're gonna have two children and we're gonna just pretend that gender is binary for right now, okay? But let's think about this. Would I count the number of girls or would I measure the number of girls? And I think you'll give me that I would count them. So we do have a discrete variable. And again, it's chapter four, it'll always be discrete. But let's think about what the sample space would be. And I need to figure out what the sample space would be because that's what they're asking me to find. They want me to find a PDF. And if, if that question throws you off, which it might, I want to start us to look at, or want us to start looking at this, this distribution table, this trait table that I made for us. I have right here the first thing when you hear PDF, probability distribution function, right? It means make a table. So I'm telling you right here, your table is what you want to make. The top row is your sample space. The bottom row are probabilities found through Venns, trees, formulas, or they're worded in the problem. But when you hear that phrase PDF and you're like, oh no, what is she asking for? Remember, go back to this giant flow chart. If you realize you're in a table problem, stay in this column, yeah? So I'm gonna make myself a table, but before I make that table, I need to know my sample space. So let me go back to our problem. Okay. And I want to think if I'm gonna have two kids and gender is binary for right now, and I'm gonna count the number of girls, how many girls might I have? Well, maybe both of your kids are girls, maybe one of your kid is a girl, or maybe zero of your kids are girls. So my sample space here are the numbers zero, one, and two. Right? When it's discrete like this, I can make a list. All right, so if I wanna make a PDF, I'm gonna make a table, and as I've been saying before, I have three values of my variable, so I'm gonna make four columns. All right, I want the three values plus a labeling column. All right, so my top row always has X and my bottom row always has P of X and my sample space should go up here. So we've got zero, one, and two, okay? Now, how do we get those probabilities? This question is different than examples two and three. In example two with the moms that were getting woken up after midnight, I gave you information on the frequency count and we converted those to relative frequencies. In example three, with Nancy going to class, I gave you a bunch of relative frequencies, a bunch of probabilities. I gave you none of those in here. So this is the kind of table problem. All right, it's definitely a table, but you have to make the table. 
And this is the worst version of it in that I gave you no information. Again, no frequencies, no relative frequencies. I'm just saying, hey, come up with the whole thing on your own. All right, so let me take us back again to this trait table and point something out, right? It says the bottom row are probabilities found through Venns or trees, formulas, or worded in the problem. All right, so example two and three, those probabilities were worded in the problem. They are not here. So this is gonna kick us back to chapter three. When I have two kids, does that sound like a Venn diagram, a tree diagram, a formula only? Well, I hope we remember, and it's okay if we don't, but this is a tree diagram problem. So I'm gonna make that two by two tree diagram. Let me give myself some space here, and we're gonna figure out how all of this plays out. Okay, so let me make my tree diagram. When I have my first kid, and again, we're gonna pretend that gender is solely a binary option here. All right, and we're gonna also just say it's 50-50 split, okay? That's having one kid, but I have two trials of this because I'm gonna have two children. So let me go ahead and split this off again. So I'll do boy, girl, boy, girl. And again, we're at 50-50. All right, let's just take a moment to review a little bit about tree diagrams. If I wanted the probability of boy and boy. All right, where did the ands live on the tree diagram? We would multiply the particular branches. So from here, I would go top, top. So that's gonna be 50 times 50, which is 0.25. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. What if I wanted the probability of boy and then girl? All right, that would be top, bottom, which is also 50, 50. Again, 0.25. Anytime you have the second set of branches having the same probability as the first set of branches, we're, we're talking about independent events. So we got here probability of girl and boy. Same thing, 50-50, or 50 times 50, but 25%. And lastly, we've got girl and girl. And if you also remember from chapter three, these should total out to one. And if I were to add all four of these, they do total out to one, okay? And that's all fine and good, but that's just reviewing a little bit of chapter three. But we're gonna extend on that in chapter four. So let's think about this. When I say X is zero, all right? Actually, let me do it the other way. Let's say X is two, let's start with two. I'm gonna have two girls, right? Two girls in this family. What branches, and it could be one, two, or three branches, or one, two, three, four branches, what branches does that involve? If I'm gonna have two girls, I must have gone bottom, bottom, all right? So this branch has to do with x equaling two, okay? And no other branches gets me two girls. So I'm gonna say the probability here is 0.25. All right, now let's try it when x is equal to one. What branches are involved? So if X is gonna be one, that means I have one girl. Well, if I'm gonna have one girl, it could happen two ways. I could have a girl and then a boy, or a boy and then a girl. So both of these branches, all right, so top, bottom, and bottom, top, these have to do with X equaling one. All right, but these are disjoint events, all right, they can't happen the at the same time. You can't have a boy and a girl, and then a girl and a boy, if we're doing the gender is binary thing, all right? It has to be in one of these two orders. Since these are disjoint branches, if you remember back in chapter three, we would add the disjoint branches. So the number here is really 50%. If you're having two kids, there's a 50% chance that you're gonna have exactly one girl. 
Now for x equaling 0, you can do this in a couple of ways. You can use the complement rule and solve for this number, and we'll do that in a moment. But let's also just think of what branch this involves. If I'm having 0 girls, that means I must have gone boy, boy. So that's this top branch here, which is x equals 0. So that would be 0.25. Again, I also could have used the complement rule if I didn't know this number. I could add the two probabilities I did have, and I could subtract that number from 1 and find out the missing probability was, in fact, 0.25. And that's the answer to this question. When it says probability distribution, they are saying, make me a table, right? So I did it. I have answered the question asked of me. That is the PDF if we're keeping track of the number of girls when I have two kids. 25% I have zero girls, 50% I have one girl, 25% I have two girls. All right, let's continue on with a different problem. Let's head over to example six. All right, so example six, again, as we, we listen for this, or as we read this, listen out for the variable in this problem. What is the variable in this problem? So a consumer organization that evaluates new automobiles customarily reports the number of major defects on each car examined. Let X denote the number of major defects on a randomly selected car of a certain type. A large number of automobiles were evaluated and a probability distribution consistent with these observations is blank. Okay. So I hear, as I go through this, number of major defects. And I, I get it reiterated here when it says number of major defects on a randomly selected car. So there's my variable. I am keeping track of the number of major defects on a certain car, a certain model. And I have a PDF. So this is great in that this is a table is given problem. Right? I'm going to put a little happy face here. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to construct it, use a tree, a Venn, nothing. And if we look at these numbers down here, right? these numbers are all between 0 and 1. I'm not going to actually crunch it, but these, these 11 numbers should total out to 1. And just to give you an interpretation here, like what does the ordered pair 3.223 mean? All right, let, let's break this down. 3 what? This is three major defects, right? So there's a 22% chance your new car has three major defects. That's, that's a lot, that's, that's no good. Right? Even though this is really low, there's a one in a thousand chance your new car has 10 major defects. That's awful, all right? And if I look at this, I feel like the weight is over here, like somewhere between two, three, and four, right? This has a bit of a right tail to it. It's gonna be a bit skewed right. So I feel the weight, the, the clumping of the probabilities here, where we see the 20, almost 21, 22, and 18. All right, so let's start to crunch some probabilities. All right, so if I look at this, this says calculate the probability that X is between two and five. So I'm gonna start from the inside out. And when I say inside, I wanna look inside the parentheses. So it says x is between 2 and 5. Now x is on my top row. So let's figure out which of these 11 numbers fit into this, this constraint. So 2 to 5. So I want 2, 3, 4, and 5 for this problem. And these are disjoint events. All right, you either have two defects or three defects or four or five. You're not gonna have five defects and three de defects at the same time. You're in the one or the other. All right, so what this means is I would add the disjoint probabilities. We're gonna go back to formula one from chapter three, where it said the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus some overlap. There is no overlap because these are disjoint. So this becomes the probability that I have two defects or three defects or four defects or five defects. So we're using formula one. We called it the addition rule back in chapter three because we just keep adding probabilities. We subtract out for overlap, but there is none. There's nothing to subtract out. 
All right, what was the likelihood that I had two defects? It was 0.209. The likelihood or the probability I had three was 0.223. I'm gonna to add to that 0.178, and then finally I'm gonna add 0.114. And then let me just see what these total out to, because that will be my answer. All right, so we've got 0.209, I've got 0 0.223, 0 0.178, and finally 0.114. It looks like, ooh, I must have made a typo. And I know I must have made a typo, because all probabilities are numbers between zero and one and that is not between zero and one. And if I look back, it looks like it was right here. This should have said 0.209 and I did 2.09. So let me redo this. And there we go, 0.724. All right. So now I want us to compare this setup with this setup. There's one subtle difference, but it will affect your answer. So this is saying pick numbers between two, but they have to be strictly less than five. So let me erase what I circled before. Let's reset the playing field and see what X values we want to include, okay? So if I go through this, I'm gonna start from inside the parentheses. So I want two, but not five. So I want two, three, and four. If I have to strictly be less than five, I do not want to include this number this time out. So I have three disjoint events. I'm gonna do the probability of two or three or four major defects in my new car. And again, I specifically do not want to include five. So the probabilities associated with these numbers are 0.209, 0.223 and 0.178 respectively. All right, so let me add those four numbers, excuse me, those three numbers together. Now let's see what we get. I'm actually just gonna take my previous calculation and delete off that last part. And it looks like we're getting about 61%. All right, so let's make it a little funkier. All right, let's look at the next option. I'm gonna scooch this up so we can still see the PDF, All right, but we're also gonna get the next two problems, or at least the next one problem in view. So if we look at this, this is weird because now you're seeing some decimals, but it's the same idea. I want, I want to start in the parentheses, and I want to circle all of the x values that fit inside this interval that's inside that parentheses. So what x values fit between 1.9 and 5.8? Let me reset the playing field. Let me erase my previous ones. And I'll go through this a piece at a time. So let's start with the first possible x value, all right, zero. Is zero in this interval between 1.9 and 5.8? No, so don't include it. Is one in there? Is one between 1.9 and 5.8? No. Is x equaling two? Is two between 1.9 and 5.8? Yes, so keep it. I wanna include that one. All right, let's go to three. Is three in between 1.9 and 5.8? Sure is. All right, let's try four. Is four in between 1.9 and 5.8? Sure is, I'll include it. How about five? Is five in between 1.9 and 5.8? It sure is. Six, is six in between 1.9 and 5.8? It's not. I'm not gonna include six, that's gonna stay out. I'm not gonna include seven, eight, nine, or 10. All right, these are the four numbers that fit inside that parentheses, or I should say fit inside that interval that's inside those parentheses. So what this means is I want to include those four disjoint events, the probability of two or three or four or five. And this might seem familiar. It's the exact same probability that we calculated up here. So while these two look different, they include the same values of X. So I'm still going to be rocking 0.209 plus 0.223, plus 0.114, 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 plus 0.
plus 0.178 and 0.114. So we know this answer already. It's 0.724. Okay. So I would recommend pausing for a moment, taking a look at this last example, and then seeing if you can do that on your own and check your work. And we'll be right here when we get back. All right, so let's, let's keep on going with this. This one says, get me all the numbers between 1.3 and 4.5. So I want you to remember, because I can't get it all in the same view screen, but let's remember 1.3 to 4.5. So I'm gonna go back here, all right? And then I'll write down that interval and we'll see if we can figure this out. So let me reset. All right, so we had 1.3 less than or equal to x less than 4.5. So let's figure out what numbers belong in here. Zero does not. One does not. Two does. Two is in between 1.3 and 4.5. Three is also between 1.3 and 4.5. Four is also between 1.3 and 4.5, but five is not. So I want these three values x equaling 2, x equaling 3, x equaling 4. So when I head back down here, this answer is ultimately going to give me, or going to be, the probability of x equaling 2, or 3, or 4. And I already found that one, right? We actually already found that number. This is going to have the same numerical answer as this second problem. So it's 0.209 plus 0 0.223 plus 0.178, which ultimately gives us about a 61% chance. Okay, so with that, we're going to hit pause again. We're going to come back and we're going to try a multiple choice question. All right, I'll see you in a few.